now let's discuss another kind of simple machine pulleys so pulleys are typically employed in machines to gain on the forces so you want to apply a, a small effort to lift or, or move a much larger load so typically you would have a wheel uh, like it's shown over here you will have a wheel and around the wheel will go a rope or um, a belt so sometimes to avoid the slippage between the the pulley and the belt you also could have the belt that have teeth that are serrated and the wheels themselves could be also uh, cut with the teeth so instead of a smooth surface you might have teeth cut into them and then around them would go a corresponding belt which will also have teeth cut into them okay so in either of the cases the principle for analysis remains same so the simplest kind of pulley that you have is what we call an open pulley system open pulley system so in an open pulley system essentially you have a rope or a belt that goes all around but it is not closed so this is like an open pulley system this is also an open pulley system so in an open pulley system let's say something like this you really don't have any force advantage you don't have any mechanical advantage uh, the only thing that you have over here is you change the direction of the force so if you draw the free body diagram of this paint bucket over here okay you have the weight of this paint bucket and then you have the tension acting that way and then the same tension t is being applied in this direction so all you have done is basically move the direction of the tension from vertical to at an angle and this might be very convenient for example if you're trying to lift water out of a well this is a well over here uh, and you want to stand away from the well then you could employ a single uh, wheel single pulley system like this and but you don't have any force advantage in this case on the other hand if you create a configuration like this you can now see that this uh, rope essentially goes uh, over this pulley and then now you have another pulley that ties back to the to the top pulley uh, and now you, if you draw free body dangle the paint bucket you have the weight of it and then you have this pulley over here assuming that this this uh, these pulleys are massless you have the tension t the acting that way tension t acting that way and now you have 2t equal to weight which will be true in case of equilibrium and that tension t over here is, is t so essentially you're applying a force of uh, a t over here and now you're able to lift a load w that's twice the tension or twice the force that you're applying so in this case we say the mechanical advantage is two to one so you could write this f output divided by f input is equal to 2 divided one, 2 by 1 right now you could actually continue to add more pulleys and have their belt or these ropes go around them multiple times to gain uh, more on the make on the on the force advantage so for example you could do something like this so let's say i have you know my top pulley over here and then this is my cable this is where i will apply my tension t this comes down okay and then i've got one pulley over here this goes up okay and now what i'll do is i'll have another pulley attached to this one and this will go around it okay like this all right and i could go to do another pulley which is attached to this one okay so i got this over here and then this comes down this comes down over here and it closes now what what do we have well we have the load here w okay so now if you draw free body diagram what do we get we have um we have the tension over here so let me draw this the lower pulley let's call this p1 and then the weight over here we have the tension t here we have the tension t here okay and then you know let me let me just complete this from here and and wrap around this okay let me do that now what do we have we have the second pulley let's call this p2 and we have the tension t here we have the tension t here okay so essentially we have four segments of the of the rope one one two three and four four segments of the rope going all around these three pulleys and that's why we have you know four values of the tension over here this is the weight so we get four t equal to w so in this case because we employed four pulleys and we had four sections of the rope going all around uh, we actually have a mechanical advantage let's write it f output divided by f input equal to four to one okay so which means that if you apply a, a, a force of one newton at the input you can get four newton of uh, output force over here so these are the open pulley systems um, now what is the catch over here when you can gain on the forces the catch is that you will be pulling the rope 
four times okay so if let's say this goes up by one feet then you will have to pull this rope in this direction by four feet okay but that may not be a problem let's say this is connected to a motor and you have a winch system you have the cable that goes all around it and you can get on the mechanical advantage while you will lose on the distance now let me make it a little bit more real for you and i'll show you um, a, an actual product uh, where we have multiple pulleys and, and cables or the ropes going all around them and we call them block and tackle system uh, the reason they're called block and tackle is because typically you will have all of these pulleys uh, put together into a single package which we call a block okay so i located a block and tackle uh, rope pulley system on amazon.com it's about 20 dollars and if you look at the specification of this particular um, uh, tackle system it gives you it tells you actually what is what is the uh, mechanical advantage so this is seven to one two ton working load capacity so what this is saying is that you have a seven to one mechanical advantage and you have a two ton working load capacity so that means you can lift up to two ton of load safely with something like this and actually by just looking at the picture you can tell whether it is seven to one or not okay so if you look over here you can see that there are three sections of the cables um, or rope going all around here and there are four sections of the rope going on the other side so four plus two, three is seven and you can see that this is where your load is going to be so altogether you can now if you draw the free body diagram of this thing you'll have 70 of the tension in the upward direction and you'll have single weight acting downward to give you a seven to one uh, mechanical advantage so you know you, you, if you look at uh, something like this uh, you don't even have to know the, the rating or the specification you can just just count the number of ropes going all around and that'll tell you basically uh, what the mechanical advantage is okay so that's good now let's look at uh, another kind of pulley system which we call closed pulley system okay so closed pulley system so in a closed pulley system you have the rope or the belt going all around but it completes the circuit so let's say i have a shorter pulley a smaller pulley and a lot or a, a bigger pulley and these two are pivoted at some point let's call this point a and we'll call this point b and then you have the belt that goes all around them let me draw it in a different color okay so this is the belt that goes all around them right and now in this case let's say you know this is our driving pulley so the smaller pulley is the driving pulley you could you could have a motor connected to it or it could be a hand crank connected to this smaller pulley and as a result uh, this belt is going to move in this direction so if this is rotating in, in the clockwise direction this is also going to rotate in the clockwise direction both of them will be rotating in the same direction and let's say the radius of this one is r1 and the radius of this one is r2 okay and we'll assume that there is no slippage between the belt and the pulley in reality if you increase the load then the belt could definitely slip over the pulley but in an ideal case we would assume that the belt does not slip over the pulley so let's say we want to find out what is the relationship between the angular velocity of this versus the angular velocity of the larger pulley okay so first of all when we assume that the belt is not slipping that means that the velocity of the contact point here let's say c1 and the velocity of the contact point here c2 will be same okay so velocity of the point c1 should be equal to velocity of the point c2 so what is the velocity of the contact point c1 well we know the velocity of c1 would be equal to this radius times omega 1 right omega 1 is the angular velocity and velocity of the contact point 2 uh, c2 is equal to r2 times omega 2 right that's for the larger pulley and they're they're equal to each other so we get r1 omega 1 equal to r2 omega 2 so we get omega 2 over omega 1 equal to r1 over r2 right so that's the relationship that we have for the ratio of the angular velocity so if let's say this is the input this is the input and this is the output then we can clearly see that because r1 is less than r2 this ratio would be less than one okay so which means that if your driving pulley is smaller in size compared to the driven pulley or the output pulley then your output pulley is going to move rotate slower compared to the input one right so you're definitely losing on the speed but the question is now are we going to gain on something so let's see that so we will start by making an assumption that 
this rope over here that's going over the pulley is inextensible so it doesn't stretch doesn't contract in any way okay and that will allow us to say that the tension in some parts of the belt remains uniform so if you look at let's say a small portion of this belt right so i'll make a small cut over here okay so i'm looking at just this segment we've been doing this kind of stuff before so let me draw a free body diagram of just that shaded part of the belt so here is the, sh the shaded part of the belt we know that this belt is going to be in tension okay so which means i can show the tension like that and let's call it t sub one okay so that's the tension all right now if the belt is inextensible then the tension is uniform at least in the upper part of the belt uh, now you will also have the tension in the lower part of the belt but it is not necessarily going to be the same tension uh, t1 over here um, because you have the top portion that's being pulled by the input pulley while the lower part is really not being stretched right so you can imagine that the tension wouldn't be you know same so the tension in the lower part was let's say t2 then actually there is a definite relationship between the tension t1 and t2 which depends on the coefficient of static friction let's say mu s between the belt and the pulley surface as well as the angle made by the contacting portion of the belt so if this is the contact point over here this is the contact point you know over here so you basically form this angle let's say this angle is alpha then we say that the tension t1 which is more than t2 uh, is given by t1 equal to t2 times e to the power um, let me write this e to the power mu sub s times the angle alpha okay but this is beside the point we don't really care about how the tension changes uh, with respect to the mu s and alpha we won't actually even need this relationship so even if you don't remember this that's fine so what we want to do is we want to answer our you know question which is what are we gaining on okay we lost our angular velocity going from the input to the output the question is are we gaining on something so let's draw free body diagram of both the pulleys so we'll start by drawing free body diagram of the driver Okay, so the driver is our smaller pulley, so that's point A, radius R1, reaction forces, and let me draw my quadrant system, and I have moment, let's call it M1, acting that way. So if we do the analysis on this, of course I have to show the tension too, so T1 and T2, what do we get? We get sum of the moment about point A equal to 0, so that's M1, which is negative, plus T1 times R1 minus t2 times r2 equal to 0 so m1 is equal to t1 minus t2 times r1 sorry this is not r2 this is r1 okay so let's call that equation one now let's draw a free body diagram of the driver uh, of the drive driven pulley which is same as the output pulley so i have point b radius is r2 reaction forces bx and by and then we have moment coming from some sort of load that is attached to this pulley so i show it in the counterclockwise direction and then same forces t1 and t2 that way okay so now i take moment about point b equal to zero what do i get i get negative m2 no that's actually positive m2 uh, minus t1 times r2 plus t2 times r2 equal to zero so i get m2 equal to t1 minus t2 R2 equal to uh, that's equal to that's that and then so that's equation number two okay now if you compare equation one and two what do we get we get m1 over r1 equal to m2 over r2 all right so if i write this as ratio m1 over m2 we get r1 over r2 so we can clearly see in this case that uh, since r1 is smaller than r2 so we know r1 is smaller than r2 uh, which means that m2 is more than m1 right so what we are gaining on over here is the on the output torque okay so yes your output pulley or the driven pulley is now rotating at a slower speed compared to the input but now you are getting a much larger torque on the output so how could this be useful for a practical application so let's say you were doing your robot design project and your robot uh, which comes with a set number of motors with finite capacity for the torque and so on you want your robot to climb an incline okay and you find that you know your robot is really not climbing the incline if you attach the motor directly to the wheels so in that case 
what you can do is you can have a pulley arrangement where the output pulley would be connected to the wheel because if you use that arrangement you can gain all the torque okay we have seen before that the angular velocity ratio omega 1 over omega 2 is given as r2 over r1 right that was a relationship that we derived before so let's see what happens when we multiply this with this okay so if i multiply these two i get m1 over m2 times omega 1 over omega 2 equal to r1 over r2 times r2 over r1 and you can see they all cancel so we get one over here okay so we get m1 omega 1 equal to m2 omega 2 and you will recall that this is nothing but the power input right so this is the input power input power is defined as the torque times omega and this is the output power so what this is telling you is that of course whatever power you apply at the input is same as the power on the output you can't create or uh, lose on the energy okay they just get transformed in reality of course this will not be true because there will always be some losses due to the friction and slipping and so on and typically the pulleys are efficient from anything from 50 to you know 80 percent okay and that's sort of the ballpark range for the efficiency of the pulley 